Today, we're going to paint this, um, I said a bull skull. I don't know if that's a bull skull. It's some kind of skull, but I love the sort of Southwest feel. Um, I said this last time, but we got cut off. We had technical difficulties. Um, when I sketch something, it helps to put a grid on it because then, like you can see, his eye lines up with halfway and maybe his horn is about halfway between here and here. And it just gives you some reference points and it makes it easier to sketch. I also, um, I did have to grudgingly learn how to render for years and years and years. So I have used a projector to get the basic layout down. And you know, some people, way out about that, but I also use the backup camera on my car and, you know, I still know how to drive. You know, once every, about half the time, I do it by hand, just because I like having the skill. But if you are having trouble laying things out and getting it, don't get frustrated. Use the tools, you know, that are available to you. So anyway, I was saying that I love to paint I, well, I challenge myself to paint all white things because our brain, our mind thinks it's just white. And you have to have show a lot of restraint when you're putting the colors in because it's much more subtle. And I just think it's a good challenge for color mixing. Um, because you need the neutral tones, you need the soft tones. Like, imagine if the dirt and the sidewalks and the streets and the branches out in a garden were all crazy vivid hues like the flowers are. The flowers wouldn't pop as much. So you need, you know, you want your soft undertones. So I put all, we're using as usual, our Golden Artist Acrylics and the colors, the particular colors will be listed below. But I like to use just these because this way you can buy four tubes of paint and make any color. I haven't found a color I could not mix. And they don't mix mud because they're very transparent and it makes for a great little travel kit and it's cost effective. So I'm only going to use those for this and most paintings I do here on YouTube. So I'm using synthetic brushes. I like to start when I'm doing something big like this, and I'm gonna to try to hold this where you can see it. But I like to start with sort of the middle tone. I'm not going with the brightest highlight and I'm not going with the darkest shadow. And every color I mix in a painting, every single color is toned down a little bit, meaning I use a little bit of all three of these primary colors. And what it does is since you know we're here on the, the little color wheel, the opposite of yellow is purple, which is these two together. The opposite of red is green, which is these two together. So when you use all three, you are neutralizing color and making it a little, you know, calmer, a little less energetic and vibrant, which makes it, you know, easier on the eyes. You know, like when you go into a kindergarten classroom and the walls are yellow and the chairs are green and everything has a lot of vibrancy. It's almost like you, I couldn't take, I don't know how they expect kids to take a nap in those rooms. It's too much. But if you're interested in art like me, you're probably also sensitive to color. So anyway, I'm taking all three of these, watch out for the blue. It has super, super duper amount of pigment. So to start with just the tiny, tiniest dot and I'm gonna make just a, you know, a nice off-white. And right here, it kind of looks blue. I kind of want it to, since the I did the background so it'd be easier for y'all to see, it'd be even more challenging to do this on a white piece of paper. But it would, it still would be fabulous. So anyway, this is gonna be like my middle tone. And I'm just gonna, basically, just 
Just give them some starter points. I'm not going to fill it all the way in. Because I, and I don't like to use the same color because this is a three dimensional object. You know, it'll have different, this side will look different than this side, depending on where the light comes from. And the light in this picture is clearly coming from the upper right. But see how the, the nice shadow cast? Okay. So is it clear? Okay, thank you for letting me know. It looks clear. Thank y'all for joining. It's beautiful here in Atlanta. I'm having a nice afternoon painting. So I'm just doing, like I might make it a little bit, a little bit lighter. And I like to keep it thick. You know, when I, sometimes um, I paint with little kids and they have the urge, I think we all do when we get started, to really like spread the paint thin because I think that's how we do it. Like when we're painting a, a wall or something. But don't be afraid, especially with these fabulous, fabulous golden acrylics, don't be afraid to leave it thick, to leave some brush strokes. Cause I think that shows like that it's hand done. It makes it so it's clearly an original and not, you know, those G clay prints, they look so, they look so real. It's hard to tell, but if you've got all this nice texture, then it's definitely an original. So, to give an object three dimensions, if you have, let's see, I'm gonna do it on another piece of paper. Um, okay, so, can you see this? If you had an object, like, like let's say a cylinder, right? To make it look three dimensional, what happens is there'll be like a shadow over here on one side and there'll be a little shadow on this far side and then I know I got my paint all messed up. Um, you'll have your middle tones here in the middle. But if you want to give it more pop and more three dimension, change the temperature of the color right next to it. So see, I'm sort of staying in the same temperature. And temperature just means it's, it's relative. Like blue is cooler than orange. But a, a yellow, like a green blue, turquoise, is warmer than a purpley blue. It just depends on what it's next to. Okay, so if I wanna give this some three dimensional pop, I'm gonna make, this is a pretty cool purple, I'm gonna make a warm, blue green for the highlight and it just can you tell how that well this is not but you see what I'm saying how it kind of makes it come out at you so what I'm saying is alternate as it goes around it would be sort of like a warm cool warm cool alternation between colors. And I don't know why that is. Maybe somebody really sciencey could explain that to me. Um, so what I'm saying is as you go and get to the different edges, change the temperature a little bit. Make, so see how I did here? This was a little bit warmer and now I've made, actually that one feels a little cooler. Temperature is just relative, and it's not, it's not always easy to tell. It's more of a feeling. But don't get lazy and just mix one color and use it for the whole object. You know what I mean? Give some, put some variety in there. See how I kind of, I kind of use the same color up there a lot. So I'm going to come in and just give it some depth. Because your mind, this is a painting I did a long time ago. Your mind, if you said, what color is that? Your mind would say it's white, but it's, 
it's gray blue, it's a little pink, it's a little orange down here, it's a little taupey. See all that? And there's even like a little green. It's very subtle right in there. So remember, you know, to slow down and look. And the wonderful thing about acrylics is that if you did, let's say, let's say like me, you did get a little lazy and use all the exact same color, you can go back in and paint right over it. I love how forgiving. They say that watercolors, using watercolors are like the least forgiving because you can layer but not, you can't completely cover up. At least traditional watercolor. Traditional watercolor is a little more transparent. So if you did five layers, so, you know, people use layering, but you can see that you layered. Here, if we paint over this, there could be a painting under here and nobody would know. So I like to generally kind of get the medium, a medium tone all over, you know, so you can see your, you can see the skull. Let's give him a name. What do you think? I think we're going to name this. What what animal is this? Does anybody know? Is it a... I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody will comment. Okay, is it still clear? Oh, yeah, I've got some of my... My regulars, we started, I started doing these online painting, you know, sessions during the shutdown and we had so much fun. Didn't we? Okay. So next let's do, I'm going to get a different brush just for fun. I am going to mix, like I always do, all three colors, but I'm going to make it a little more purple. So it's gonna have a little more blue and red than yellow, but the yellow just makes it so it's not crayon bright. And then I'm gonna add, oh, look at I remembered. I'm gonna add, I added a little white. So this is all three colors. If you do all three colors in equal amounts, then you get a neutral, which looks like black. That's what I use instead of black. But I'm adding a little white. And I'm gonna give them a little shadow here under the eye. And there's a little shadowy down here, but I'm going to do, you know, the shadow on the other side of his face and I don't want to do, I'm not going to do the same color because even though like your eye won't pick it up, I mean, you think it would probably be this, it looks sort of the same. What I'm saying is do a different color over here. I'm making it a little bit greener and then I'm going to add some white. But see how this being a slightly different, see how that's warmer than that? Just gives it, it gives it, you know, some interest, gives it some dimension and have fun with it. So here's another thing that I've noticed when adults come and visit my studio and paint, and it's very normal, don't be hard on yourself, but it's very normal for people to be uptight and hold the brush, brush really hard and close to the thing. Get your whole arm in there. Have fun with it. Get some energy in there. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I go outside the little exact shape. Get the, your energy comes through. That's what I'm saying. If you paint a whole painting and you're like, you're feeling uptight, it shows. And you can still be detailed and exact, but let your energy come through. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, now I'm gonna do the part of these horns. And I think they're, see how they're kind of yellow? They're kind of a nice creamy yellow. And if you use all three colors, use a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the red. It's really magenta, but I use it for the red because of the, the range. And then, sorry, let me show you all this. And then tons of white. So these are the neutral colors we used earlier. This is Oops, let's see, look how strong that blue is. Look at that blue. I cannot, that blue, that blue, that phthalo blue. It took me so long to learn how to spell phthalo blue. 
So it's very subtle. But when you get it up here next to each other, you can tell the difference. So this will be fun. We'll make the, we know we're going to make the point very faded blue. It's going to look cool. So this is what I mean about restraint. We're, right now, we're painting all these nice, these colors are all very neutralized, meaning, so a pure hue would be this yellow straight out of the tube. And if we painted with that, it would demand so much energy and you would not be able to look at anything else. You know what I mean? It's just, you know how when like something almost flashes? So when you neutralize it, meaning you put the colors complement, which also means it's opposite, you tone down the vibrancy. It literally has less energy. And I don't really understand all the science of it. But it's true. Imagine like if you had a rug in your home, you know, like those beautiful rugs from the, the far east that are all, I don't know what you call them. Imagine if they were all primary colors, if they were all pure hues. You couldn't even, you would feel like you couldn't even walk on them. They'd give you a headache. Think how bright that would be. It would look like a kindergarten classroom. And if you go, like if you went into any home, like from Veranda Magazine, I love Veranda. Um, even, it, even though it looks like they use red or navy, it is very almost, I would, I'm going to go out on a limb and say 100% never happens that they use a pure hue. You know what I mean? It might look like the room is red, but it is a very toned down red. And that's what makes it soft and livable and not so, ugh. you know what I mean? Okay, so just curious, are you guys painting or are you just watching? I don't know. Oh, there's some people watching. Thank you for watching. Did you see how he's kind of coming together and he's got some. So we did the, I did, I did kind of get lazy, but we can go back and we're going to add temperature. We're going to make these really round. We're going to give them depth. So. Let's do the shadow underneath. I think that because these are a little bit yellow, let's make the shadow a little bit purple. And we still want to use all three. I use all, all three. Sorry, I did it again. I use all three colors in every color I use in the painting. Now, towards the end, I might do a tight, tightsy highlight that is, you know, just yellow and white, but it's small. And it's at the very end. You'll see. And color mixing, do not try not to get frustrated. I know that's easier said than done. I've been, oh, this is what I want somebody to figure out. <laughs> I keep meaning to do it with a calculator. I can't do math under pressure. Like if I'm sitting at the blackjack table, I, I feel like I can't add because people are watching. I can a little bit do math, but not, not on camera. This is nerve wracking being on camera, just FYI. But what the math I keep meaning to do is I'm 52 years old and I've been painting, I think since I was 11. So how long, how many years is that? So what I'm saying is I've been practicing mixing colors and it takes a while. And you know what we're gonna do for our next class? We're gonna do straight just color mixing because it's fun at using these. We can do it, maybe we can do it at the end if we finish this booger. But anyway, that's how many years I've been painting, whatever that number is. I should be able to figure it out. Well, 52 minus 10 is 42. So 41 years, I believe. My friend's laughing at me if I did the math wrong. I was not a math major. People, I was an art major. Okay. Do you see how he's getting a little dimension? So now here's the fun part. So see how these are kind of yellow? If we make a highlight that's a little bit purple, and it doesn't have to be, it's not pure hue purple, but just purpler than this color, it will give it that pop. Now is when you need to clean your brush, probably. That's another great thing about using these, as long as you're, you don't have to clean your brush until you go significantly lighter or significantly darker. 
I got to do my same brush for all these. Oh, and then we're going to have so much fun when we do the shadow. I love the shadows. Okay. So for the highlight, let's just take a tiny, tiny bit of the phthalo blue. See, look how strong that is. And a little bit of the magenta. And I even at this point wipe my brush off because there's so much pigment in that blue. And then, so make it a very, very light color. And with the tiniest dot of yellow, just to stay true to my formula. But what I'm saying is you want this to be just a very light purple. You know what? And that highlight really gives it some jizz. And let it, you know, let it mix in a little. Who cares? Okay, so here's the fun part. I love, I never use black. I don't even, actually, my daughter bought me some of that Vanta black. But other than that, I really, I maybe have one or two tubes of black in my whole studio. But if you take all three of these colors and mix them equally, you will, you just make the best neutral. And then when you add white, you get these fabulous, gorgeous grays. And it's just got so much more depth and just black is just, you know, no color. And so this comes, it's reads as a black. And it's not, I mean, I don't know if it is black. So white, I believe, scientist, if you're out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but white is the combination of all the colors in the spectrum and black is the absence of color. And that's all I'm going to say about that because, <laughs> because I would be making it up. I would just be making it up from here. I love how much longer this horn is over here. I, don't you love how nature is just so, the way things occur? Oh, yeah. And then I do like to take a little bit of straight blue and put it. I don't know why. This phthalo, this phthalo blue is one of my favorite paints in the whole wide world. It has, it's got so much versatility and it's so, it's kind of like, it's kind of dominant. I also like to take a little, sorry, can you see this? I like to take a teensy bit of the phthalo blue and look what happens when you put some white in it. It gets like crazy peacock blue. And I like to add just a little thing right there. Okay, now that we've got this beautiful neutral down here, let's use it to do his eyes. And I think they would be way darker on the inside. So do you just see what I'm saying about don't get lazy and just do that dark color throughout the whole thing? Because almost everything as it gets in different light is going to have variations. I mean, it might not have a ton, but It's gonna get a little light from outside, but that one needs, that one got a little, got a little carried away with that one. So, um, text me, I would love, I don't know about text me. Morgan, if you're watching, will you post? Morgan's my, my producer, producer. It's my best friend from college. Um, I don't mean to sound like, you know, Kardashians or anything. Um, but will you post an email? Because I'd love to see if you guys are painting at home. And so take a picture of what you paint, take a picture of your setup, of who you're painting with, all that good stuff. We'd love to see it. And maybe we'll do like a compilation video of your art. It's fun to kind of put yourself out there. Okay, then it looks like he's got some warmth in his, I don't know what you call those things. Nostrils? Yeah, they're nostrils, duh. Sorry. So to get it warmer, we're gonna use more yellow. 
and magenta. And I'm using the neutral that I had on the brush already. And then you can, if you want it to be, it's called tinting when you add white. And shading when you add black. But I don't like using black to shade. I don't think it has the same depth. You know this. And I have nothing against the color black, but it's not a color. Sorry. I have nothing against the absence of all color. But I just, I just think a neutral, a toned down neutral is so much better. Like look at the eyes with the blue in them. And then I like to take this and use it a little bit up here because it's so much warmer and it gives it one more little bit Okay, then, let's see. I think I'm gonna go back to this kind of blue shadow color. Cause I think, I think there would be a shadow. Oh, kind of. There's elements to a shadow. I can't remember all of them. It's like the self shadow, the reflected light from the other side. Start looking at objects with a strong light on them and you will start to see if you really, like tomorrow, as you're going around with buildings or whatever, start paying attention to shadows because they do, they behave in a very predictable way, but there's a lot to them. And it's a great way to make your painting have depth and make it pop. Okay, is it clear? I'm gonna blow this picture up on my laptop. Got some new people joining. Thank you for watching. Hope you're painting or at least having a good time. Um, okay. So let's, for these lines, these darker parts, take all three colors. If your brush has too much white on it, you might want to wipe it off or clean it. So take all three again and make a nice, super dark neutral. I mean, look how great that color is. It, Deep, and I'll, okay, right after this, I'm gonna add white to it so you can see the fabulous luminous grays it makes and make me feel happy. Okay, so there's a little shadow in here on the inside of that horn. Another one over here, and this one might actually kind of cast a little bit of a, well, we'll do that in a minute. And then, He's got these lines that go. And you let it be, you know, let it be thinner and let it skip some spots, you know, because, let me see, where did that go? Oh, it goes right up the middle. But what I'm saying is sometimes the light is on it. It's not gonna be a consistent straight line. And keep smushing your brush so it gets nice and flat and maybe even dip a little water in it because what I'm saying is sometimes it's gonna look like pencils in and sometimes it's gonna basically disappear. But you can always go back and add your, isn't that interesting the way the skull plates connect? And here's another question, I was painting I like to paint um, human skulls. You can see them on my Instagram. It's another all white object that's fun to paint. I painted this giant human skull and then I put in big stencils. Deep down, I'm sweet. I did this for my teenage daughter and I could have sold it 30 times. <laughs> People connected with it. I think they also had teenage daughters. Um, but anyway, I was wondering as I was looking online for you know images of human skulls so that I could have something to paint from, because I don't have one. I mean, I don't have the one that's not covered up. I was wondering if scientists can tell the difference between a male and a female from, from a skull. Does anybody know that? Like, is it the skin and the flat? You know, I don't know, so that's kind of interesting. 
Okay, so we got those lines, and if so, if that like that guy line got a little thick in there, I'm gonna go back in and do some white over him and make him a little, make it a little thinner. And you know what I just did? I just used the color from the horns, and that's okay. I think it's kind of working. That's what I'm saying. Don't. See how there's like patchwork colors all over this thing. Don't be so literal and strict. That's not, you know, that's the best thing about art. The rules are, there are no rules. You know, like in math, it's always, two plus two is always freaking four. Always. I mean, boring. I'm just kidding. Math is wonderful and makes the world go round. Okay. For the shadow color, you want to do... Basically, a deeper version of this. Most people think shadows are black. Look at shadows. They have all kinds of colors in them. Look at this one. It's kind of purple. This really is pretty consistent all the way through. But we're not going to make ours consistent because if you look at shadows around in the world, they're not, they don't stay the same color. So I'm going to take this neutral that I already have and I'm going to add some white. Because look, it's, dark, it's a lot darker than the paper, but it's not like black and white. You know what I mean? It's, and you can always change your shadow. I do that all the time. But the shadow, and you, you'll learn from practicing with shadows. It's like if there were, let's see. Let me get that other piece of paper out again. So let's say there's a ball on a table and the light source is up here. The light is going to go like this. And depending on the angle of the light, it's going to cast a shadow like that. Well, that's actually, I'm assuming it's sitting on the table. It's not a flying ball. Sorry. But so the shadow, and if the light's lower, it's going to be longer. Does that make sense? And that's something that you'll learn with practice. So once again, observe and go around and you know keep noticing and I think shadows are usually darker like right next to the object so like right in here we might put some phthalo blue but here's something that I definitely learned when I was in grad school I had got an MFA from East Carolina and it was actually a degree in metal I really wish I had been a painting major um, I did not have a huge painting portfolio because I didn't go to an art school. So, you know, if you have children that are interested in art, get them, make a portfolio. Just gather together their cool pieces of art. The more unique, the better. It does not have to be from professional instruction. Art schools are so fabulous about finding creative kids. So let them be bold and be out there like you have to be to be an artist. And... Just collect, like, even, you know what I mean? Even if they're, like, their journal is super cool and they've decorated the cover, that can totally be in their portfolio. And if the school poo-poos it, then it wasn't the right school. But I know that some of the very best art schools, like SCAD, they are very open with what can be their the portfolio. I mean, I think you have to send it in in a certain way. You have to take slides or whatever their instructions are. But... They understand that everybody does not have access to a lot of art instruction, sadly. And some, what you mainly need to be an artist, and I'm assuming if you're watching this, that you have the urge to make art. And that, my friend, is all you need. Well, I mean, eventually you gotta get yourself some materials. But what I'm saying is to create and be a good artist, and I don't mean to say good, to be a joyful, happy, Artists, you just need the urge to make art. Bam, I said it. Because it's true. And it's very easy to be your worst critic and be hard on yourself. And when that happens, I want you to go to the nearest large town and go on a gallery tour and look at the art that's out there. Because there's a wide array of art. 
and when you get hard on your own art, I want you to go out there and you'll see that your art is beautiful and cool and unique. Oh, yes, what are y'all thinking? We liking them? I kind of want, and then this is where, now we can have fun with it. So now I'm gonna clean my brush. Now I'm gonna do what I told you we were gonna do. I'm gonna use a little bit more of a pure hue. I love putting a pop of orange. Look up um, Wayne, uh, what's his name? Wayne Tebow, I think that's how you pronounce it. And he does, he does these hot little pops of just bright orange right along a shadow. And there's some science reason. There's a lot of science in art. There's some sciencey reason that it makes it makes the shadow like pop even more. But just a teeny tiny. It's like this hot little edge that happens. And it really gives it. I I I, I try not to use these super trendy words, but this is such a good word. It gives it a little zhuzh. Little zhuzh. It's so fun to say. You know what? Right starting now, I officially use trendy words. I'm not going to be a person that follows stupid rules. I can do whatever I want. Okay, and then I'm going to do some phthalo blue with some white. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it right here in his eye. See that? Now that we've used all this restraint and all these toned down colors, when we use these little pops of pure hue, they pop like a jewel tone, like, like a gemstone. In a gold setting. You don't want to, or a rug, you know, that's beautifully woven with all these nice neutrals. Oops. And then down here, let's give his little nose. Is that, would that be where his, like, I guess his muzzle or something? We don't know what the animal is. We don't know. There's a lot we don't know. <laughs> There's a lot your teacher doesn't know. If anyone could look it up, they'd be appreciated. Okay, I'm gonna use a tiny drop of yellow just to really make it hot. And I, you saw me, I have mixed all three colors and every other color, but watch what happens when you do this. Now that we've shown all this restraint, it'll give this so much oomph. It'll give it oomph and zhuzh. But you just don't wanna do the whole thing because then it's too like, eh, and then like maybe up here, maybe here. Here's where the teacher needs to take it away. You can always come back and do more. So kind of think where the highlights would be. They're usually the, literally the highest part where the light hits it the most, like this. Yeah, the, I don't know if this, the weird ball we drew, the highlight would be at the spot where the light hit it the most directly. So I'm kind of having to imagine if the light's coming from up here, this might stick out a little bit. So, there we have it. Oh, and then we could put a little, I do like to put a little phthalo blue like along the, Shadow. Sometimes the shadow is the darkest right next to the object. Okay. Any questions? Y'all fine with that? Now, one of my favorite parts. I'm gonna sign my name. I like to sign it in red. I'm not sure why. I used to do it, oh, that's orange. Oops. Okay, wait, I asked any questions and I'm gonna look and see if anybody has any questions. Oh, Morgan was gonna put up, there's the email address. Isn't that cute? It's BM Funky Fish. But send an email, I'd love to see what you're doing or if you have any questions. It's so sharp brush. Let's see, what time is it? How are we doing on time? Isn't that amazing? We're almost right at an hour. Okay, also, if you have any requests for a certain class or, you know, a certain topic, I do want to do a, just a straight color mixing, color, you know, 
what you, I want to show y'all what you can do with these three colors because so I'm not going to do pure red. I'm going to add a little yellow, a little blue. And again, I'm sorry, I'm not showing you. I'm going to tone, even tone the red down a little. Because it's, when it's too bright, it's too bright. This is not a sharp enough brush. This is not a sharp enough brush. Not sharp oh, here we go. Got it. Oops. Oh, oh, oh. I just totally dumped it in paint. And sometimes on smaller paintings like this, I just like to do my initials. And then, so that that red doesn't get too much energy, you know what I mean? I like to add a little, little Jojo red, just, I don't know, here and there. Okay. So, if you haven't painted yet, take a screenshot right now. Sorry, my hands are shaking. I had too much caffeine. Take a screenshot, and then you can work from that photo. Or you can pause this and slow down. Um, but thank you very much for joining me. Please um, subscribe if you like this. And there's other videos. And share, and all that stuff. And we're going to keep doing more. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks.